Hello everyone, and welcome back to a new video from Mysterious World. Today we will talk about experiments that could almost end the world. Before we begin, leave a like, and please subscribe to our channel to help us out. People have always gone into the unknown to try to figure out how life works everywhere, from life on Earth to life in other galaxies and universes. We hope that by coming back with new ideas, we will be able to grow up and see things from a different angle. But there have also been mistakes and estimates and risks that were taken even though people knew what could go wrong in order to get to a good place. Let's start naming some of them. The Kola Superdeep Borehole In 1970, the Soviet Union decided to drill into the upper mantle of the Earth's crust in the Arctic Circle. They wanted to get as far down as possible. In 1989, many holes that spread out from a central hole were dug until they reached 40,230 feet, 12,262 meters. At the time, this was the deepest man-made point on Earth. They could move forward because the temperatures were so high. They reached 356 degrees Fahrenheit, 180 degrees Celsius. When they first started, a lot of people were worried that this hole would let demons out of the Earth's core or cause a huge earthquake. But these fears turned out to be unfounded. Instead, the hole showed how little we know about how the geology of our world works. The Trinity Test As part of the Manhattan Project, the Americans set off the first ever nuclear bomb in Los Alamos, New Mexico. In July 1945, History.com says that the bomb exploded with the force of about 21,000 tons of TNT, so it's easy to see where the test could have gone wrong. In fact, that moment in history could have been the start of the end, and nuclear weapons could be the end of us all in the long run. The Large Hadron Collider The European Organization for Nuclear Research built the Large Hadron Collider (LHC), which is a particle accelerator that can be found near Geneva, Switzerland, CERN. When it was first built, some people worried that it would create a black hole that would grow until it was bigger than the Earth and swallow it. This led to unsettling conversations and news stories, but there was really no reason to worry. Starfish Prime In 1962, the United States set off a nuclear bomb high above the Pacific Ocean as part of a series of tests conducted at that height. During the height of the Cold War, these tests were done. The force of the explosion was 1.45 megatons, which is roughly a hundred times that of the Hiroshima bomb. According to the Preparatory Commission for the Comprehensive Nuclear Test Ban Treaty Organization, no one knew for sure what the bomb would do to the magnetosphere, which is a layer of charged particles that protects the Earth from solar wind. The explosion had a wide range of effects, including the formation of a five-year-long radiation belt around the Earth and the destruction of numerous satellites in low Earth orbit. New Zealand's Tsumemi Bomb In 1944 and 1945, New Zealand studied how bombs could be used to create artificial tsumemis. The military scientists in charge of New Zealand's Project SEAL thought that they could cause tsumemis and tidal waves by placing bombs in the ocean in a way that would send the energy from the explosions into the water. After thousands of test explosions, New Zealand finally decided to stop experimenting because no matter how hard military experts tried, they couldn't get the energy from the explosions to go in a horizontal direction. If New Zealand's tests with tsunami bombs had been successful, it might have become common to make tsunamis. This would have made it easy for anyone with a regular explosive device to cause widespread chaos and death. Genetically engineered oil-eating superbugs Scientist Ananda Chakrabarty who worked in the research and development department of General Electric, put a plasmid into the Pseudomonas putida bacteria in the middle of the 1970s. This made the bacteria able to break down petroleum. Chakrabarty made the bacteria with the idea that one day they could be used to clean up oil spills. But a lot of people were worried that these bacteria could get out of hand, eat everything in their way, and beat out other bacteria and creatures on Earth. The bacterial domination theory is a green version of the gray goo theory and it may be a more likely explanation than the Grey Goo Theory, the Mercury and Volcano Project. From 1987 to 1992, the Russian military set off nuclear explosions deep below the Earth under the names Project Mercury and Project Volcano. They did this to disrupt electromagnetic fields and tectonic plates. It might sound like the plot of a bad James Bond movie, but these experiments were done four times before the Convention on the Prohibition of Military or any other hostile use of environmental modification techniques, banned them in 1978. These tests sound like they could be the plot of a bad James Bond movie, 
If tectonic plates are moved for a long time, it could cause a series of strong earthquakes and make electromagnetic fields less stable, which could cause a number of theoretical and unplanned problems. Accidentally creating a black hole Before New York's relativistic heavy ion collider RHIC got started, there was a lot of worry among the general public that the RHIC might, at some point during its operation, create a black hole that couldn't be controlled. In 1999, this led to the publication of a number of shocking articles, the most famous of which was titled Big Bang Machine Could Destroy Earth and appeared in the London edition of the Sunday Times. Researchers at RHIC look into many different aspects of black holes, but they don't have enough energy to make a real gravitational black hole. Whether or not the researchers kept their fingers crossed when they started their experiments at RHIC in the year 2000 is a different story. But as far as I know, we are still here and have not experienced the extreme relativistic effects that would happen if we went through a black hole. Weaponizing the Plague In the 14th century, the plague killed as many as 60% of the people who lived in Europe. The Soviet All-Union Institute of ultra-pure biological preparations was able to turn the plague into a weapon at the end of the 1980s. Up to 60% of the people who lived in Europe died because of the plague. Vladimir Peseknik, who ran the program, shared this research with the public soon after the Berlin Wall came down, with a version of the Black Death that would spread over time. As part of a plan by the Soviet Union to fight the plague, a powdered form of the disease-causing bacteria Yersinia pestis was put inside a polymer capsule. Operation Cirrus In the late 1940s, the U.S. government tried putting dry ice into hurricanes to try to change their path and stop them from doing damage. Scientists put 180 pounds of dry ice into a hurricane that was heading east into the Atlantic Ocean. The hurricane then did something that no one could have predicted. It turned around. When a hurricane hit the city of Savannah in the state of Georgia, at least one person died and more than $200 million worth of damage was done. Savannah is used to having strange government actions happen there. This early attempt to change the weather led to the UN's Environmental Modification Convention, which eventually made it illegal for the military to change the weather as a way to test weapons. At this point, none of these experiments worked out at all. On the other hand, the lesson is very clear. We play dangerously with things we don't fully understand and the results could be disastrous. It's the worry that people won't be able to handle certain kinds of information when they start looking into things they can't control.